Hello, my name is Arthur. In the last video we did um, our keywords and in this video we're going to start looking at our preprocessor words. So we're going to do all the words except for include. So we're going to exclude include because it has different rules. So I've written them all out here. We can see there's a little bit of a problem with overlap. So we'll have to deal with that. And um, if we were to scan down a bit, we'll see that in the last video, I actually left a problem that I thought I had fixed, but I didn't come back and check that I'd fixed it. So the fix on that is very simple. Um, what I did was in uh, search for the keywords, I just made a typo. So at the point where we're looking if the keyword has the quote tag, I intended to um, assign the value false, but I put two equal signs. So that's actually a comparison. I'm not assigning a value at all. So we just have to do that and that will fix that issue. So we'll compile that. And we'll see that that little typo is fixed, the issue. So we'll just come down to our keywords. Now they're not in boldface, we can see that. So what we'll do is we're going to leave this open. So that we can... Um, sort of use it for a visual reference. So let's clear a space. Let's just take define here. We'll copy that. We'll paste it down here. And we'll zoom in a bunch. So that we got some bigger print to see. So we'll just use this as a visual aid sort of deal. Um, actually, let's get that back to normal. Let's get our keywords first. So these are all of our keywords and our limit. We might as well bring that with us too. We could use the size of word divided by size of word at index one to calculate our limit size. But we'll just do it this way. instead. So we'll just leave that like that. We could comment it out, but there's not really any reason to do that. So we'll come back to this and I didn't intend to do that. I intended to do this. Okay, so to exclude if and else, what we'll do is we'll check for the preprocessor tag. So in order to be able to check for a preprocessor tag, we're going to need to make the color first. So let's make a color. We'll just copy this. We'll paste it in here. Open up GIMP get the color picker. I've already picked a color to speed things along. So I'm going to go with a, co a purple color like that. We'll paste our color into here. And that's a HTML notation is what we're copying and pasting out again. So we'll just call this um, processor. and save that. Now, because we want to use that to limit um, our search results in keyword, it's going to need to be a global. So we'll just declare, declare that up here. We'll give it the same name. 
we'll just copy this and we'll put it down with the other global ones and we can just borrow this here paste that in there give it the right name And then this needs to be up in um, highlight line too. So we'll copy that. We'll stick it up here also. So we'll put our function just above keyword because that's, I like to keep them in the order that I call them. So we'll just call this um, void preprocessor and we'll put our bracket down here and I'll need to we can call it an int we can make it a constant I'm not too fussed either way technically it should be a constant I suppose and technically I should um I should use the size calculation to calculate it and make that more proper. So for this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take include. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to make it the first index in the array. Then let's compress this down and make it look a little more orderly then the other thing I'm going to do is before I had issues in my experiments with doing this with having if before elif and endif and yeah I'm not sure I never really tracked through the logic to figure out exactly why it was interfering but it has something to do with if um, it has something to do with if being at the end of the word so having if as the last word well, actually, I can't say that it has something to do with it being at the end of the word because it was after these statements. So, yeah, that's one I'm not really clear on, but I'm going to move it anyways, just in case. And if the order isn't important, then I guess the order wasn't actually important. So we're going to borrow some of these things out. So we'll copy those, we'll paste them into here, and these are pretty standard, we don't need tag, we don't need tag here, I just move my keyboard aside there, it's getting in the way, and then we want to move processor. So that's the tag that we're removing when we come through here. So let's see, we have the booleans, the limit. I'm pretty sure that's just about everything. So we would just go right into our standard while loop. And that should be a one, not a not. So let's see, um, things here will be very much the same. So we're going to want to do the forward search. If we don't get a result, we'll break. We're going to use check two in the same fashion. We're going to be checking for quote tag. So a lot of these things we can just 
take right out of here and put them up to here. So in this case what we're going to be searching for is the number sign. Whoops, I'm going to put that right. And then this will need to be amended. Because we want to make sure that the number sign is neither in the quote or it as a char. So that would be inside of the single quote tag. So if it's inside of either of those tags, check two would become false. So let's actually go up to the top and look at some of the rules here. So we have define. We're not going to do include and the reason for that is this. It has a set of rules that's more extensive. It will have all of the same rules as define up to here. And then after here, the rules kind of change. So the rules for define is we can define something. But there has to be a space between define and something. So that's one rule. It doesn't matter how many spaces are here. It doesn't matter how many spaces are here. But we can't have characters in here doesn't matter what character we put in here and the same goes for here so it can have white spaces it can have white spaces and it must have at least a white space before whatever we're defining so hopefully that sort of explains the rules that in a nutshell that pretty much covers it um, we don't want to make it so we're going, so we're searching for define. And this is the entire word. It just doesn't work that way. Um, it's more flexible than that. Because some people want to write it like this. Because the white space makes it more legible. I generally, I don't white space anything there but it does make it easier to read. So we don't want to restrict the ability to put those white spaces in, but we do have to make it so that um, characters that don't belong there make it so that it doesn't work. So, so we run a check for the number sign we make sure that it's not inside of a quote or a char and that's probably one off actually everything here is one off let's try to get our tabs right sometimes my Sometimes I end up tabbed in when I'm not supposed to. So this is the part where we'll um, start using the visual aid. So I'm going to use this symbol. It's going to represent our um, iters. So when the search is done, we have start and end iters. So we've moved start and end iters. Um, at this point, we would want to check if check two. I think that's right. 
Now, what we want to know about is this space. So before we do that, well actually it doesn't matter if it's before or after, we're going to make scan. That's one of our iters. Equal start. So now we have scan sitting where start is. If check two, we'll go while. GDK text while not GDK text iter starts line and scan. So If start and scan are at the start of the line, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to go past that. But if it's not at the start of the line, it will do these things. So what we'll get it to do is we'll GDK text inner backward cursor position. and scan. Up here we'll need uh, to declare a char. Temp equals GDK text iter get char and scan. So we'll get the char. If temp is not equal to and I don't know if this is actually the best way to go about it. Um, I'm often I'm looking for spaces, but that might not be the best way to go about it. So let's actually go if not is space temp and I'm pretty sure that is space and we'll just check that I'm doing that right is part of type C so let's just check that um, is digit is lower print punct is space so yeah, that's right. And if we use this space, I think it's going to be a little bit more um, flexible because it's going to accept tabs. So that's something that I haven't considered before and it might actually um, represent a need to change some things in other places because tabs and spaces are not necessarily the same thing. So we're going to try experiment with that here and this is my first try with that. Okay so if it's not a space um, check to equals false. So we'll fail check two. So let's just get that out of the way. We probably won't need internet anymore. So now if there's anything illegal here, we have set so that we're going to fail. So it will fail the check. Now, let's see where our brackets belong. Okay, once we've gotten to there, now we have 
it doesn't really matter where scan is. Um, I think that we would put scan equals end. Let me just check where I'm at here. I'll make sure I'm moving the right ones. Okay, this doesn't go here. Because we don't have to nest inside of check two all the time. So we'll put that here. And it won't matter if things have failed. There's not a lot going on here. So now we're going to go while. Um, while. Check two. And I think that should be the best way to go about things from here. So let me just glance through to see how many mistakes I've made. There's one there. Backward, not a space. Okay. So what we'll do here is we don't want to break out of this loop by accident. So we're going to declare another boolean and we'll just call this one check. Then we'll do a forward search. Using check. Now, end is okay to use. We don't want to use start. We want to use iter. Um, we don't want to use stop. We want to use line. So, we're going to need to move line around. So, let's put line where we want it. Line equals end. G GDK text iter forward to line end in line so now we have line wherever that may be that may not have any space or whatever it doesn't matter we're going to put a space because once the search is done, um, oh, we need one more thing here. We need an integer for loop equals zero. And then we need to change what we're searching for. So now we're searching for a keyword. Our um, array is called word. So we'll be searching for word at index loop. So now what we'll do with check, it's not like the first loop. We don't want to break out of this loop. We want to be able to iterate through the whole array. So we don't go, oh, check equals false. We just have it do things based on the value of check. So we be if check. to do our first thing. But before we do that, 
what we have now at this point is we have start, scan, enter, and end. So now we know where everything is. Excuse me. So, yeah, now we're going to use the offset calculation. Um, yeah, long ago this offset calculation should have been turned into a function. Maybe we should just write the function right here. It would have a return value of an int. Let's call it offset. It will get a GDK text enter um, I don't know if this needs to be a pointer we'll have to we'll have to experiment with that Let's just make sure that I'm doing things right here. We don't want to get too sidetracked on this. And it will receive. Last. and it will return this calculation so um last minus first and later on we'll move that and this can replace where I've written this formula a bunch of times so that's a little sidetrack but um yeah it'll help while offset so we want the offset um, we used first and last so first is scan enter is last so basically first and last is last is the furthest away from the beginning of the document first is the closest to the beginning of the document so while the offset is not equal to zero we want to um, get the char first temp um, we'll get the char first let me do this okay my software is acting sluggish here for some reason so get char and scan We'll check if it is not a space. Check two will become false. 
except we're not dealing with check 2 now, we're dealing with check. And then we'll move scan forward a cursor position. So the way that I'm writing this, um, this probably represents a way that that is a little bit better than I've been writing it, that I wrote in the number one. So using while like this with the conditions in it is relieving an extra if. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking that some things will get written a little bit differently and a little bit more like this. Okay, so I'm missing a bracket and I'm missing a tab space in here. So now we should know what's happening right up to here. Um, because we're moving the cursor after the check, we should never end up checking accidentally here and going, oh no, it's not a space and returning a false. So, now we're pretty much at two things at this point. Um, let's see, where is that? So we could stay inside of if check. But it might not actually be the thing to do. At this point, we might want to go if check and loop equals zero. So, if at this point we've gone through here, the only thing we need to know now is here and if this is um, include. So, this is if check equals zero is means it's include. And we don't know what to do with include yet. So, we could gprint include. Okay, so this way we are doing something. We know we found it. And we'll break. And that's probably the best place to do the include stuff. And then here, I think we would be if check in loop not equal zero. Well, actually, no, because yeah, at this point, it shouldn't matter. So it will be if check and that's it, I think. So that's subject to change it will depend on how include turns out. So there's kind of two scenarios here. Um, we need to see what's at the end of define. So I think that would be much like this. And I don't think it actually matters whether it's at the end or not.
actually. I think we can go like this and simply apply the tag. And I'm just guessing here. But that'll probably work. Rather than changing the value of check. Okay, so where does that get us? That's the while loop. So if we've made it to here, and when we apply the tag, we break. Because we found our word, there's no use going through the loop anymore. So at this point, we increment loop. And if loop is greater than or equal to limit, we would break. And then this one should be the while. This one should be the other while. And then there's the function end. So if I'm not mistaken, I think that this just about does it. So let's actually take this function. Let's cut it out of here. Let's move it up to the top so it's available for all of the other functions. And yeah, in my own time, we don't need to do it on video, but pretty much everywhere that uses that formula can be changed to the function call. So there's a few places that use that formula that could now be changed to um, the function call. So it's here. It would have been here. Um, I'm surprised it's not here. But I guess we didn't need it in that one. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to call that before we call keyword. Because it's not going to do anything if we don't make the function call. So we'll copy that, paste it here. We'll make the function call um, pre-process processor. That needs an underscore. Let's go make sure that was the name I gave it. Let's fix that. I'll just copy it and paste it in. That has a way of making less um, typos. So I'll we'll initialize the page editors for this one. And then up here in um, in keyword where we exclude things because they have the quote tag we're going to want to add in or and we'll add in the preprocessor tag or the processor tag that way um, if and else won't overlap like they were so we'll just go cross processor that should exclude that there so greater than or equal to we'll just scan through a little bit maybe catch some typos if there's any that I can see offhand 
things all look pretty much just about right. So we can close this up. We don't need the visual aid. Um, actually, here's something that we don't want to forget is the inner line. So um, when I'm putting on the tag, we have to give it the right name for one. So processor. And we don't want to do start and end. We want to do start and line. Because this is this would be for things like define. And the way it gets handled when it's include will be completely different. And something we're going to have to do in another video. Because include has its own set of rules. That's pretty difficult to work out. Um, let's see, 14, that's something wrong with the offset function. Okay, so I didn't put um, a semicolon there. Last, first. Does it say anything else is wrong with that? Okay, 372, 372. not enough here um, or that 403 apply tag I'm not sure what we're seeing there. 502. And an exclamation. Or a, that, that. So we'll try again, and that should thin it down some anyways. Oh, okay, that's got them all. So we'll run, and we'll see if that's working. Hopefully that is all done straight, and we don't just lock up or something like that. All right. It's not doing anything at all. <laughs> that's not what we're looking for. Um... Yeah, let's see. It's found include, 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 include. And it hasn't found anything else. So let's just see if that has anything to do with spaces. Okay. So that didn't work out. Let's go scan through and see if I can see an obvious reason why that didn't work out. Um, it made it to include. Let's check to make sure loop is going up where it should. So loop should be changing. It found include. Um, if check. Oh, here's the problem. This was supposed to be end. This was supposed to be checking if there's a space at the end of the keyword. And I forgot to change that from scan. So that's probably entirely the problem right there. So hopefully this gets us running. This has probably been um, one of the longer videos, but getting these working, these are a little bit more work than, than other ones. So we can notice here in the printout that when I'm close to the include, so if I was breaking include, it's finding it 
because I'm still close to it. But when I'm one line away, it's not printing. So we can tell that our um, our two line idea is working perfectly. So yeah, if I went like this, it would break both of them because that idea is working. So let's zoom in so we can see that our rules are working properly. Okay, something happened there that was not good. So something is locked up here. That's in one of the rules. So let's see, where would that be? Um, Oh, let's see. Here's where the problem is. Um, I'm moving scan in the wrong direction. This was supposed to be forward because um, on the keyword, we had scan, then iter, then end on the other side of the keyword. So scan was sitting, um, was sitting on the other side of the number sign and was supposed to move forward to to iter. That's why scan iter first last. So that's probably that lockup right there. So if we put any digits in here, they're being invalidated. That was a little bit sluggish. I don't know why sometimes it's a little sluggish. So it's not particularly picky on this side, it's not allowing characters in the middle, and it's not allowing characters here. We can see else and if are not bold, and they have the right color. So I would say that this is working. Um, I think that this is the full list of preprocessor commands. You might want to check on that. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I just looked them up myself. So there are other things that we can do as preprocessor things. But as far as I know, this is the list that would do something like that. And there's other ones that I've looked up. It's kind of like... Um, there's one that looks like this that I saw when I was um, looking things up, but that doesn't change colors when I type it into this software. So I've kind of followed along with what I should what I expect from this software and trying to get it to trying to get mine to act much like this. So in the next video, we'll come back and We'll try to figure this part out and get include working. And until then, I hope that this was helpful and take care.